Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Wakeiko Pico Presso. In this video I unboxed it and I shared how impressed I am with the Pico Presso in terms of unboxing experience. Here's a very short clip of the unboxing video for anyone who didn't see it. Slow-mo sexy unboxing. Don't say anything. Tell me a secret. I think the Pico Presso would make a great gift. In fact, I bought this one for my son. He's a barista, as I've mentioned before, and he's really into outdoor stuff, climbing, walking, etc. So we got him this for his birthday, and then I asked him if I could borrow it for this video. Yeah, Cheers, Josh! Yeah. I've had a bit of use out of it, and I have to say I'm really, really impressed with the espresso quality this is capable of. Let's make a coffee, and then I'll tell you what I think about the Pico Presso. So I'm dosing 18 grams and I'm doing a one to two ratio, which I find works well with this bean. For this, I'm gonna be using my chocolate brownie blend from Seaworks, which is currently the best selling bean on the internet. I'm using the Made by Knock. <laughs> I'm using the Made by Knock air grind, which isn't really made for espresso, but it seems to work really well with the Pico Presso. I'm gonna be reviewing this soon, by the way, but spoiler alert, I think it's ace. Review done, there you go. You heard it here first. I'm gonna use just over 70 ml of water, a 10 second pre-infusion, and I'm aiming for a total shot time of about 30 seconds. So important thing is to preheat everything, get everything nice and warm before you pull the shot. So, I forgot a bit. Shower screen. Fill it with hot water, boiling water. And the instructions will say to straight away just pump that through, but I find it doesn't quite warm it up enough. So what I would do is fill it with boiling water and leave it to warm up while you're grinding your beans. Done. Pump some of this boiling water through to properly heat the group in the shower screen. And dump the rest. And then it's a case of working quickly so you don't let it all cool down too much. Dosing ring. WDT. Toast. I'm going to do this naked, oh, not me. <laughs> the porter filter. <laughs> I'm going to do that when we hit 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> Dancing and singing Dancing and naked. naked. <laughs> so just over 70 ml of water. Lid on. Oh, 
and between eight and ten pumps <laughs> and then pre-infusion ten second pre-infusion carry on I'm not perfectly dialed in, so we've got some spurters, which is a sign of channeling. Not bad. Espresso. Cheers. Ugh, tastes like <laughs> that's you alright then. So there we go, a very nice shot of espresso. Overall, I'm really impressed with the Pico Presso. If you're someone who's used to the peculiarities of using espresso makers that aren't electric, and I think you'll probably be really happy with this right off the bat. If you're not someone who's used to using espresso makers like this, just keep in mind that they do take a bit of getting used to. And for me, the main thing is getting them properly preheated and then being quick enough with your workflow so it's still warm enough when you pull the shot. The first few times I used this, I didn't get that right. I either didn't heat it up properly or I let it cool down too much. So I ended up with under extracted, lukewarm espresso. Nobody wants that. Once you get this right though, you can make cracking espresso with this little thing. And the great thing about it, other than the great shot potential, is the way it all fits inside itself. Such a neat little package to launch in your bag. I think it's got to be up there among the most practical travel espresso makers, but also, in my opinion, the shot quality is really impressive too. As I've said, my only comment about the espresso quality is that you need to properly heat it all up. Get hot water in there with the basket, leave it heating up while you're grinding, and then pump the water through, and then work quickly before it cools down. It does take a fine grind, so you'll need a grinder capable of espresso. This obviously is, and as I've said, I will review this soon. Make sure you're subscribed and allow notifications to see that when I've published it. If you use it bottomless, just be aware, there's a very common thing that happens with bottomless portafilters called spurters. They're caused by channeling. It's common to see while you're not yet dialed in, and even if you pull a really good shot, you can still get the odd spurter. And I got one right in the eyeball yesterday while I crouched down watching the shot. So overall, mega unboxing experience and a great gift idea. It's capable of really good espresso, but you will need to get your routine well honed when it comes to getting it preheated and working quick enough to not let it cool down. And you'll also need a capable grinder as it does need a pretty fine grind. And I'll link to some in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? And please click the like button. It's impossible to sneeze in your sleep. And that has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click the like button if you've ever sneezed or slept. Don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere of my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.